Vegetarianism Explained by Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride Introduction Few things are harder to put up with than the annoyance of a good example. Mark Twain Vegetarianism is not common in the majority of the world's countries. Of the countries where statistics on vegetarianism, including veganism, are available, about half show less than 5% of the population. A few countries show 9-13% to of the population. Austria, Australia, Israel, United Kingdom, and Sweden. The remaining countries have lower numbers, apart from India, where almost 30% of the population are recorded as vegetarian. India is an exception, we will, and we will talk about it in more detail in this book. However, the number of vegetarians outside India is growing due to active promotion of vegetarianism, particularly in Western countries. Some people decide to become vegetarian after discovering how animals and birds are treated by industrial farming. Others decide to make such a profound change in their lifestyle for emotional, political, or religious reasons. Many people decide to become vegetarian because they believe that they will lose weight. Reading the promotional materials, one gets an impression that, the, that vegetarianism is the right way to live your life, that it is good for your health, kind to animals, and that it saves the planet. A lot of these materials are written with an air of righteousness and aim to make the reader ashamed of eating meat. On top of that, food and nutritional sciences produce an endless number of statements proposing that meat and other animal foods are the cause of all illnesses in the world. It is very easy to get confused, and indeed many people do get confused. Many parents today believe that if their child decides to become a vegetarian, they must be supportive. People regard vegetarians as setting a good example, while vegetarians view meat eaters with the air of a pious person looking at a sinner. Are vegetarians a good example? What about vegans? Should we all become vegetarian or even vegan? Apart from pro-vegetarian propaganda, there is very little scientific information available on the subject. Among the small number of vegetarian, among the small number of studies that have been done, quite a few have not been conducted very well and attract professional criticism. Thankfully, science does not have a monopoly on knowledge. Many teachers, many doctors who work with vegetarian and vegan patients have accumulated valuable clinical experience. They don't need studies to tell them what effects this lifestyle can have on a person. In this book, I would like to share my clinical experience and my conclusions with you, dear reader. I hope that this book will be given as a present to anyone who is considering becoming a vegetarian or a vegan. If you care about this person, please ask them to read it first.